So welcome back everyone for the second session of Amplitudes 2021. And uh, we have the pleasure for the first talk to have Albrecht Klemm talking about Feynman integrals in dimensional regularization and extension of Calabiao motives. Please. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to uh, talk here. And um, I will talk about um, three papers uh, from which you can see that I'm rather new in this subject. And uh, <clears throat> we have just uh, put out a rather long paper, which contains sort of an overview about the relation between uh, Calabiao and Feynman graphs. And this one contains, I think, 250 citations. And uh, since I'm very new to this field, I uh, will uh, leave the citations uh, to this paper. But I should also mention that without the work of Spencer Bloch and Pierre van Hove, Matt Kerr and uh, Chuck Duran, Jakub Boyali, Matthias Wilhelm, Stefan Weinzel, Johannes Brödel, David Broadhurst, to which I talked personally, uh, this um, going into this field would not have been possible. So let me um, <clears throat> start then with, um, you know, if this works, um, yeah. Uh, can you actually, is this uh, satisfactory uh, to see it uh, in both sides of the screen or should I sh uh, do this, not, uh, avoid this? Um, works for me, so. Okay, so that for me, you think uh, because then you have a, a better overview. So <clears throat> basically this new paper, this uh, aims to explain the application of this dictionary relating Feynman integrals to families of Calabiao motives and extend them to include the dimensional regularization parameter. And uh, <clears throat> so the first aim is uh, basically to figure out general uh, properties that come from geometry and what they mean uh, for um, Feynman graphs or Feynman integrals. And the other aim is uh, to um, in, uh, extend this analysis to the epsilon parameter. So in general, we um, consider um, Feynman L-loop integrals in uh, general dimension. And you see here, that there is um, this new, and new is the power of the propagators. The propagators is given here. Uh, the masses are real and, um, and one over D are these uh, propagators. And uh, <clears throat> further notations are that this Q is, uh, of course, the momentum that flows to the uh, J's edge. And, uh, <clears throat> and PE are momentum, external momentum, subject to momentum conservation. And of course, the most important uh, parameter here for this extension is there is a critical dimension, which for the Feynman graph will be two. And we want to uh, extend uh, the calculation now uh, to general epsilon. So further, uh, we have uh, uh, in, the, in the following uh, implicit parameter scale parameters, which are independent Lorentz scalars that can be built out of this external momentum and the masses, and I will call them generically uh, X. And uh, <clears throat> these uh, um, propagator exponents, they have uh, a norm, and uh, this is called uh, the absolute value of nu. And uh, of course, the, um, uh, the underlying nu here takes value in the lattice and the corresponding integrals are called master integrals. So <clears throat> what I learned, I mean, is that the expectation is that uh, only sites in a finite domain are occupied if one considers the uh, this thing modulo the integration by parts relation. And uh, <clears throat> among these um, a finite number of master integrals, um, we can define sectors. And uh, these sectors uh, are specified by a map, uh, which is essentially on each of this component of the a new vector and heavy side theta function. And that gives a partial ordering on these um, uh, on these new vectors. And basically it tells you uh, which are uh, sub uh, subgraphs uh, that um, <clears throat> that have less propagators and therefore a simpler topology. So uh, furthermore, dimensional analysis shows that these x are really projective coordinates, and uh, that uh, the Feynman graph uh, depends on uh, ratios that you can choose, for instance, uh, as uh, as um, <clears throat> by this z uh, here. 
So um, <clears throat> the main example that I want to discuss is of course a very simple series of such Feynman amplitudes, uh, however, together with all its master integrals. And uh, that are the uh, uh, L-loop banana diagrams, uh, which as I mentioned are critical in uh, two dimensions. And uh, here is the uh, diagram. And uh, <clears throat> here would be then the uh, specified the momentum Q, which flows uh, through the, uh, through the uh, this uh, propagators. And uh, for the um, um, in, uh, <clears throat> in homogeneous coordinates, uh, I can take uh, these ratios. So uh, one can uh, now play this game uh, that um, um, what are the sub diagrams of these diagrams and uh, for the banana graph, this is uh, of course completely trivial in a sense. So one has uh, two L uh, plus one minus one master integrals in uh, L plus one sectors. And there are already L plus one sectors which, uh, in which one of these propagator is missing. And uh, <clears throat> the remarkable thing in this uh, geometry is that all these sectors correspond to tadpole integrals. And that means uh, in particular that you know this uh, right-hand side. And then there are a couple of further master integrals, or actually uh, the majority of them. Uh, they come uh, from the sectors uh, where all the propagators are in, um, <clears throat> of course, with different multiplicities. And, uh, and now you can um, have this K in this, um, in this uh, lattice, 0, 1, 1, according to this heavy side function. And uh, the absolute value of this K is uh, less than, um, than L plus 1, where this absolute value is, again, the sum of that. And you see then here, you uh, have uh, one of this master integral, which is um, specified by the 0 here. And then you have the other master integral, which essentially contains <clears throat> the derivatives of these uh, master in, of these uh, master integral here, uh, where uh, the k cannot be arbitrary because it's bounded in this way. So uh, <clears throat> that is um, this is um, uh, the most general case, but uh, one uh, notices that the number of master integral changes discontinuously when you change uh, x and epsilon. So for instance, if you look at the um, uh, equal mass case that I will also discuss a lot, uh, then you have only L plus one master integrals uh, which are given here. But of course the property that uh, the, um, that, uh, <clears throat> so to say the tadpoles are uh, explicitly given uh, is uh, still true. But it also happens, and that is something where the first time I think the uh, geometry of the Calabiao starts playing a role. Uh, when epsilon is equal to zero, then we have the uh, <clears throat> critical dimension, and you will see that then this number of independent uh, master integrals um, is uh, greatly reduced uh, to this uh, number. And this is actually uh, the uh, horizontal cohomology of a complete intersection Calabiao that we will um, see uh, in, a, in, a, in a while. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, you can also give, uh, so to say, the individual um, Hodge numbers of this uh, complete intersection Calabiao uh, by this formula. And if you add this up and add one of the, of the homogeneous solution, then uh, you get these numbers of master integral. So what I learned um, <clears throat> mainly from Claude and, uh, and other physicists is that, um, that uh, the experience shows, and partly this is proven, so that is the uh, 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 part where I have to really um, excuse myself uh, not, to, um, not to name all the contributors here, but uh, <clears throat> the uh, expectation is that uh, when you form a vector of these master integrals, um, then there is a kind of a linear differential equation of them uh, where um, the, um, uh, here is a, a, a rational one form. So it's a matrix of rational one forms uh, that uh, can be um, uh, calculated for instance by this integration by part relation. So, um, so this of course looks uh, from the point of view of um, uh, people that work with Calabiao very much like the 
uh, flat Gaussmannian connection. And in fact, uh, it uh, has many, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it has direct, uh, directly to do with that if you then find the appropriate geometry. But um, <clears throat> the main, and for me also the most enigmatic point is uh, that what we also heard in the last talk, how to improve this basis. And apparently uh, there, um, <clears throat> uh, in order to uh, provide an iterative solution scheme, one uh, makes a basis change and then uh, these, um, uh, <clears throat> these um, Pika uh, sorry, Gaussmannian, uh, connection looks like that with this uh, transform matrix and uh, <clears throat> a simplification is basically that these quantities have now a nice behavior when epsilon goes to zero. So that is the first step and the second step is that you now decompose this um, master integral into its sectors that I already uh, mentioned before and then uh, this a becomes block diagonal and uh, <clears throat> the master integrals in each sector fulfill then an inhomogeneous solution. And in a sense, since the banana graphs are not very interesting in themselves, but they can provide uh, this inhomogeneity for more uh, relevant uh, graphs. And of course, you want to know them um, exactly as analytic functions because eventually you want to integrate that. And, um, and uh, that is uh, one of the motivation of uh, this work. So, um, <clears throat> so let me um, <clears throat> uh, say uh, just that this contains uh, uh, the lower sectors. And, uh, and as I said, we sh should actually uh, aim for uh, characterizing this analytically exactly in order to uh, fulfill the previous iterative scheme, which is of course um, very, very complicated. But still there is a, a sort of a special role of the banana integrals in this program. Namely, as I said already, the lower sectors are all these tadpoles and they lead, uh, lead uh, already to analytic expression. And then uh, the banana graphs do occur in this iterative procedure, uh, which in uh, more complicated Feynman diagrams. And of course, uh, what is also uh, started with the work of uh, Spencer Bloch and Van Hove and Matt Kerr uh, is that um, in the homogeneous, um, <clears throat> the homogeneous solutions, the epsilon equals zero limit uh, corresponds to periods of families of Feynman integrals. So that is um, something that, uh, that I will heavily draw on in the following. So let me uh, make this a little bit more general in a way that maybe it does not only apply to the banana integrals. So I want to uh, define period integrals for geometric families of Calabiao n-folds. And these n-folds, they are called mn, n is the dimension. And it's basically uh, the thing that I'm interested in is a pairing in the middle cohomology uh, <clears throat> uh, with the middle homology, and that is provided by this integral. So in particular, uh, gamma is a basis of the cohomology and, um, and, the, uh, and the big gamma was a, a basis of the homology. And one can make in particular a choice of this basis so that uh, this basis of the uh, homology and this basis of the cohomology gives a one. And then uh, these, um, uh, what we call intersection actually leads a non-degenerate intersection form. So one can study this intersection form uh, for even an odd color Biaus, and uh, it's an even lattice form uh, for uh, even color Biaus, and it's an odd integer symplectic form if n is even. And uh, these periods uh, <clears throat> are solutions uh, to, uh, to the homogeneous Gaussmannian system uh, in the epsilon equals zero limit, and they correspond to uh, maximal cut integrals. And the later can either be characterized by these properties or also by the contours that you choose in order to make sense of this integral, namely that they enclose all the poles. And then, um, <clears throat> uh, as we will see, uh, Calabiao manifolds are maybe not the right concept. We have to uh, maybe speak of motives of Calabiao uh, <clears throat> families, but uh, in both cases, this first order Gauss-Mannin system is actually equivalent to what is called the Pika-Fuchs differential ideal. 
The point is that this picker fuchs differential idea is sometimes uh, easier to come up with, in particular if it comes uh, from a, a gelfand kapranov selevinsky system, as it turns out to be the case for the uh, banana graphs. So if you are very um, sort of um, um, uh, seeing it uh, as a fundamental uh, uh, principle of physics, then of course we know that for L uh, equal one, the periods are rational function, for L equal two, the period are elliptic functions. And in a sense, uh, of course, elliptic function, that's uh, how physics basically starts um, with uh, the uh, Kepler problem. But for higher L, they generalize to periods um, or, uh, <clears throat> I mean, of dimension L, or this is also the weight of the uh, Calabiao uh, motive. So uh, <clears throat> what is the Calabiao motive? You can say this is characterized by this Picker-Fuchs differential ideal, uh, this intersection from sigma and some monodromies, which, inter, uh, which uh, are integer and, uh, and respect this intersection. And of course, then we have an inhomogeneous solution because uh, even so the tadpole are easy in homogeneous in homogeneity, you have to integrate them. And in the physical in the um, in the geometric uh, context, this uh, corresponds of taking a chain in the group. And uh, <clears throat> both structures can be actually analytically solved. That is the main uh, point or the main message. Uh, even for a very high uh, dimensional Calabiao, that means have very high uh, loop uh, banana uh, diagrams, for instance. And uh, as I said, the status of this program for the banana gram uh, um, integral and this program, I mean, just uh, in providing uh, this analytic function is uh, very much simplified because the Picker Fuchs ideal is a Gelfand Kapanos Selevinsky ideal. And the program for epsilon equals zero has been completed, uh, more or less. That means that you can find the uh, analytic solutions everywhere. And uh, of course, in this work, we want to uh, generalize this to, um, uh, to get the uh, general epsilon dependence. So I find it uh, useful uh, to um, give a more a general dictionary between what we have learned from the banana graph um, between properties of the Calabiao motive on the um, right hand side and the, um, and the Feynman integral where this uh, uh, dictionary is strictly speaking uh, inspired of course uh, of uh, our um, experience with the banana graphs and in particular here in uh, the critical dimension. So what we have so we have at the one point that this maximal cut integrals in the critical dimensions uh, are n uh, form periods of a Calabiao. I have to say that the Calabiao is a complex scalar manifold with vanishing churn class. And that implies actually that there's a unique holomorphic uh, n zero form. And the simplest Calabiao in this sense is of course the elliptic curve. Then uh, the dimensional ratios that we have introduced they correspond to the unobstructed complex moduli or um, equivalent since mirror symmetry will play a role in this talk uh, about the um, complexified Keller moduli uh, of the uh, Calabiao. <clears throat> then uh, <clears throat> there is an integrant uh, basis for the maximal cut and this corresponds to the, uh, to the middle hypercohomology of the manifold. Then there are a quadratic relation about this maximal cut integrals they for, uh, correspond to quadratic relations from Griffith's transversality. Then this integration by part basically corresponds to the Griffith's reduction method. The uh, complete set of uh, differential operators uh, given uh, uh, max, uh, annihilating a maximal cut integral corresponds to this picker fuchs uh, <clears throat> differential integral. And then the non-maximal cut integrals, they uh, correspond to a relative um, uh, to the relative cohomology of the Calabiao, and that uh, gives rise to the inhomogeneous solutions. Then, of course, the contribution of the subtopologies, they give the extension of the Picker Fuchs equation, as we already saw in the banana graph. But of course, now the more general extension comes from, uh, among other things, uh, the, uh, the evaluation of these um, solutions of the uh, GKC system. And then the full banana graph is this chain in the goal. And what is very important and has motivated us a lot is that all these degenerate 
uh, kinematics correspond to singularities. Uh, um, uh, uh, that means of the Calabiao geometry, that means uh, singular devices in the moduli space. And here in particular important is the large momentum regime, which corresponds to the uh, point of maximal unipotent monodromy that we have for Calabiaos. And uh, in particular, it can be then classified by the um, uh, gamma head class of the mirror. And general uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, logarithmic generations correspond to the limiting mixed shot structure from the monodromy weight filtration. And then the analytic uh, structure and the analytic continuation basically is very much related of the, uh, with the monodromy of the Calabiao motive and its extension. And uh, moreover, if you have special values as the integrals for special set E, that corresponds very often to the reducibility of the Galois action on the middle cohomology and the associated L function values. Then, of course, we have this uh, monodromy group uh, that is uh, essentially integer and leads to many other facts like integrality of the mirror map and the instanton expansion. And that should uh, uh, tentatively uh, um, um, lead to a generalized modularity of this Feynman integral beyond the elliptic case. So let me go uh, now to the banana graph uh, a little um, <coughs> um, um, quicker. So um, <coughs> here is the banana graph. And uh, you, saw, uh, you know that this is given by these two semantic polynomials. And uh, it can, uh, uh, the, the contact to the uh, geometry can be made by this uh, representation where uh, we see again our new eye uh, uh, here now in the disguise of this delta. And we see a critical parameter, which appears here and here, which uh, is given like that. And uh, our aforementioned um, uh, chain integral is uh, given uh, by this expression. And the measure that you see here is uh, just the measure of uh, uh, on a PL. So uh, <clears throat> let me uh, say that the two semantic polynomials are very simple to calculate. Uh, now I excuse these are not the same x, these are sort of say, coordinates of the Calabiao, uh, while the uh, x's are, of course, combination of this p, uh, are this p and m uh, squared, uh, the uh, moduli. And uh, in any case, uh, for d equal zero, one gets one of this maximal cut integral, which is very important in the following, by just integrating uh, this over the torus, and uh, then uh, by um, a form of the uh, Griffiths residuum for these uh, all important uh, three n zero form or, uh, uh, of the Calabiao, uh, we see that this actually gives a normal period integral on the uh, Calabiao manifold, which is defined in this case uh, just uh, from the um, semantic polynomial. So the point here is that if you take this torus and you separate this S1, then you get a lower dimensional torus, which makes sense in the Calabiao. And uh, this S1 just produces by this formula. This is a formula for a complete intersection. You can imagine how it looks for one polynomial. Uh, this, uh, rep, uh, this produces this L0 form, uh, L minus one form. So um, uh, here, uh, T is uh, this torus integral. And as I said, this actually lives now on this uh, Calabiao, which is this hypersurface. And it's not difficult to perform all the L residuums of our uh, original torus T to the L. And then we get uh, for the uh, for one maximal cut integral, we get this expression here. So the problem of this uh, approach, uh, and uh, that is also related of what how we think about the Calabiao motive is that this actually is a singular uh, hypersurface. And that's very hard to work with. So uh, there's one uh, way to get a workable model and that is just deforming this generically. So the point is really that if you see uh, this uh, parameters here in the semantic polynomial, they are not really generic and that makes this uh, motive singular. So therefore uh, we um, <clears throat> actually also by a great help of Matt Kerr, uh, which give us a crucial hint, uh, we uh, had, um, uh, we found a very elegant way to circumvent this problem. And uh, this is uh, to uh, promote this to a complete intersection in uh, this uh, projective space. Now um, <clears throat> this uh, complete intersection 
is simply given by two polynomials which are linear and this uh, linear polynomials are written out here. And just you are, as you are familiar probably from elliptic curves, there is uh, an, um, <clears throat> um, there are automorphism of the ambient space, which in this case are SLIC. And by this automorphism, you can actually almost, uh, I mean, you can of these four parameters, which by the way, have to have determine unequal zero so that this is a real complete intersection. You can actually, um, <clears throat> for each P1, you only get one parameter. And moreover, you can actually solve this constraint uh, by this choice of the SL2Z action. And then you get uh, the original um, Calabiao manifold, uh, singular Calabiao motive back. The point is, however, that this uh, manifold is perfectly smooth. And uh, in, in addition, it fulfills a very uh, simple um, um, uh, GKC system that was already uh, studied by Yao and other people, including uh, me, actually. <clears throat> and uh, you can also see uh, that, um, <clears throat> so this is the, uh, this is the uh, uh, motive. Uh, I mean, so basically you have to relate this motive uh, by a birational uh, um, um, transformation, but you can also now check that uh, these uh, <clears throat> maximal cut integral that I defined previously uh, can be also calculated in this complete intersection geometry. And for this, you just uh, um, use the second uh, Griffiths residuum form that I give you here. And you do a couple of more um, uh, integrals after bringing this into the right form. And you get exactly the same expression uh, about the hypersurface motive. So then you can ask yourself, why is this better to have the complete intersection? Well, I mean, it's better because it's smooth. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> it also shed some light of how we should think about Calabiao motives in general. So if you look at the deformed complete intersection, you can easily calculate it by toric geometry and this polyeder stuff, uh, the, uh, the um, Euler number, uh, but the um, <clears throat> Euler number of the complete intersection is even uh, easier to calculate by the adjunction formula. And you see they are different. So, uh, so these things is unlike for Riemanns, uh, for uh, uh, Toros, where you have only one uh, geometry for Calabiaus, when you want to relate Feynman diagrams to Calabiaus of higher dimension, you cannot avoid speaking about motives and submotives and families of motives and so on. So let me explain you a little bit more carefully uh, how these motives are related. So I said that this motive is uh, that this motive of the hypersurface is singular, and in fact, um, and here I mention a, a mathematician again, uh, Hulek and Beryl have analyzed the situation, and they found that um, if you go to this motive, uh, that uh, singular motive, um, I mean this is the resolved one. If you deform it, then you can also uh, blow it up, and you get this um, uh, this topology. And now, lo and behold, if you uh, look what happens, if you do that, then you find uh, that this singular uh, surface, at least uh, Calabiao, uh, I mean, this is just for one dimension, but this works in any dimension in principle, has 30 nodes uh, where an S3 sphere uh, is shrinking. And now you can go to the smooth motive by replacing each of this singular locus by a P1. And this adds uh, two for every P1 that you do that. And then you get from 80, from 20 to 80. Uh, it turns out, and that is uh, another uh, uh, remarkable fact uh, that uh, the mirror symmetry is also a new motive, that this is exactly the uh, mirror topology of this complete intersection. And in fact, you can uh, see uh, <clears throat> uh, another reason why this uh, complete intersection is better uh, than the original motive because it's self mirror in a very particular sense. So as I explained, you can uh, use the SL2Z action to get uh, rid of most the deformation parameters to left with L minus one. This is just the physical parameters. And now if you take derivatives of this omega N form that, whose form I have given you by the Griffiths residuum calculation, and you use the, uh, uh, the um, model, this modulo, the, um, <clears throat> the um, partial integration uh, relation, then you will find uh, that, um, <clears throat> and then you can define the horizontal cohomology. And this horizontal cohomology is just, just the cohomology 
for the um, Feynman graph in the critical dimension that I gave you to which the master integral reduce if you go to this critical dimension. And the later is mirror to the vertical uh, cohomology of this um, of the uh, mirror manifold, which however turns out to be the same manifold. So if you restrict yourself to this uh, uh, horizontal and vertical cohomology, then uh, these manifolds are presenting you actually self mirror. And this brings a huge simplification to the program, of course. So, um, <clears throat> So this mirror picture is very beautiful in the sense that these, uh, um, these parameters that you see in the Feynman graph actually now corresponds to uh, the uh, uh, complex scalar parameters of these P1s. And uh, the physical parameters are just the quantum volumes of this P1 that we know very well from mirror symmetry. And moreover, the associated GKC system that in this case was um, found in this <clears throat> by Yao and others uh, uh, gives you the exact solution of this uh, problem. <clears throat> One can also see that there's a nice vibration structure. So the elliptic curve you would realize in this way, the K3 in this way. And of course uh, you can see that uh, this, there is a very nice nested um, 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 <clears throat> uh, vibration structure uh, that basically makes sure that this, um, um, <clears throat> this um, functions uh, the elliptic functions that you get from the elliptic curve and the uh, slightly more general, uh, only in the equal mass case elliptic function that you get from the K3 will reappear in this limits uh, that you uh, send certain uh, <coughs> um, uh, masses uh, to infinity. So uh, <clears throat> let me go now uh, to one uh, of the, I think, most beautiful application of this uh, geometrical picture. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> there is a very powerful application of this realization, and that is the gamma class um, formalism. So the gamma class formalism relates the Frobenius spaces of solutions that we can easily uh, construct at the point of maximal unit potent manotromy, which is this large momentum point, to an integral basis of the solution of the Picker-Fuchs equation. And that is important physically because there is a, a maximal cut integral that corresponds to the unique period that vanishes at the nearest conifold and describes the imaginary part of the banana graph above threshold. And an extension of this um, gamma class also leads the full Feynman graph. But we should note that these two um, um, uh, particular um, elements of cohomology that I uh, defined here in all dimensions, namely this SL and this TL minus one are dual to each other. And they happen to play a, a crucial role in homological mirrors. So let me make this a little bit more uh, concrete here. Um, so <clears throat> let IP, uh, now these are the uh, Frobenius uh, bases. They have a certain structure, which is characterized by this maximal log uh, degeneration. And SP you know, uh, just denotes the number of solutions, and you can calculate the number of solutions of the uh, by the intersection numbers of uh, VW. And uh, <clears throat> then you have uh, a particular a map to the scalar parameter, which is given actually by a ratio of two of the solution. And now uh, <clears throat> homological mirror symmetry predicts that this period, which corresponds, as I said, to the imaginary part, which characterize uh, these uh, Feynman graphs above threshold is given by this expression. And if you evaluate this expression, then all the asymptotic behavior of this period is given by topological data of this uh, Calabi-Yau, which are easily calculated. And um, it also uh, leads an extension. So these Feynman graph here in the critical dimension, uh, this uh, asymptotic behavior is completely determined by this expression where we have this extended gamma class, which is uh, given here. So let me give you a short glimpse of what we are doing in order to extend this to general epsilon. So uh, to this, uh, I want to compare this with Barnes integral representations. So you can use this integral to, derive, to, uh, <clears throat> to rewrite this um, semantic polynomial in this form. And uh, by a long calculation that uh, I will not reproduce here, you then find in large momentum regime explicitly for the uh, master integral uh, this expression. And you can actually expand this in the large momentum um, um, region 
And uh, <clears throat> you will then uh, get uh, here a closed form expression, more or less. I mean, this uh, is given here. And of course, if you expand this now in epsilon, uh, then you will find all this logarithm uh, that you um, have seen in the Frobenius spaces and in the gamma class formula. And, uh, <clears throat> and this expression confirms now in the leading order uh, this gamma class um, <clears throat> uh, um, uh, that we have uh, found for our motive. But of course, now you can expand this to any order of epsilon and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, extend this thing uh, to uh, the general epsilon deformation. I don't want to go uh, too much into this direction because uh, <clears throat> I think that Claude Dürer is much more um, can much uh, uh, better explain uh, these uh, these dimensional regularization and its and its um, importance. Let me just know that this differential operators that you um, uh, that annulates the banana graph in the critical dimension are now uh, also deformable. And in a sense, the um, asymptotic behavior that I have calculated before just gives you the. Um, just gives you the um, boundary conditions for the solution of these differential equations, which we can now uh, uh, calculate for all epsilon. So, in order Five more minutes. maybe to prepare uh, for the uh, talk of Claude and also to uh, sort of uh, give you a feeling what I think what properties of the Calabria motive will make it maybe uh, are most noticeable for the Feynman graph uh, community. Uh, let me give you uh, four properties of Calabiao motives that I think are important in this sense. So let me now uh, <clears throat> define the period. Previously, this had um, uh, two indices. Uh, one is eaten up because I always take the holomorphic in zero form. The other index is here grouped to a vector. So this is the uh, period vector. And then there is an, uh, a key observation of Brian and Griffiths that played a big role in string compactification on Calabi-Yau manifolds. And it tells you that if you take uh, this period vector and you um, uh, group it here with this intersection form sigma, uh, then uh, you get um, uh, zero if R is uh, less than N, where N is the dimension. And you, uh, I mean, if the number, uh, the total number of this derivative is less than the dimension, and if the total number is this derivative, then you get a rational function in the complex uh, structure. So the, what this means for, um, for Feynman graphs, I mean, here I, I can, I observe that this happens actually in every basis. So this is useful for analytic continuation, but anyway, you get, uh, you get here quadratic relations um, um, from the, uh, which are either zero, oops, I'm going a little bit too fast, which are either zero or this rational function that you can calculate. And uh, these are very interesting quadratic relations uh, for this uh, banana graph. And of course, we checked uh, for a few uh, loop orders uh, that they are, uh, so to say, uh, uh, characterize the master integral and there are not more of them. Let me give another thing, which is uh, looks a little bit like quantum mechanics. So there is a self adjointness in this picker Fuchs operator. In particular, if you have uh, just one parameter, then you get the picker Fuchs equation uh, uh, operator, which is just the derivative of one parameter. And if this is um, <coughs> a L loop, then you get here um, uh, an uh, L plus one um, uh, <coughs> differential uh, order differential operator. And now the Jukawa coupling in this case fulfills a very simple equation by which you can actually see that if these things are rational, that sky is also rational. And uh, now you can um, uh, make the following uh, properties. Again, uh, these are names of mathematician. Um, uh, these are Duco, uh, this is from the ASCE list. Uh, basically this was observed by uh, Almquist, Enkeford, uh, Van Straten and Sudilin that for Cala our Calabiao properties, uh, our, all Calabiao operators have to have the self-duality uh, property. That in other words, uh, when you have a one parameter uh, master integral, uh, then, and this operator is not self-dual, then uh, I'm wrong in uh, uh, stating, uh, then, then it's not a Calabiao motive. So it's a simple criterion, if you like. Then there's another um, a third thing, which is a Landmann theorem. And that states that all the monodromies around the singular locus loci have to fulfill this property. 
And it's not too hard to see that this gives you essentially the Jordan blocks, the biggest Jordan blocks in this matrix that is restricted by this uh, number here. And, uh, and if you um, um, uh, um, <clears throat> relate this to uh, the, um, to this discriminant that is uh, typically a physical scale parameter here, then you see that uh, in a <clears throat> master integral, if uh, it degenerates in let's say an infrared limit higher than log to the N, it cannot uh, come from a Calabi-Yau motive, which has a dimension less than N. So it's a very simple consequence uh, from this Landmann uh, series. Then I also want to uh, mention a, a more uh, refined version of this Landmann analysis. So there is an SL2Z uh, serum which uh, uh, uses the limiting mid-shot structure, which is a little bit described in our paper. And this restricts the structure of this Jordan's block further. So for instance, for Calabiao threefolds, uh, in this uh, uh, classification list of Almquist, Enkeford, uh, uh, Duco von Straten, and so uh, they found uh, from this SL2Z orbit theorem that it can ha have only uh, three types of degeneration. This is no degeneration, but it can have a conifold. It's related to the local exponents. It has can have a K point, and then it has two uh, two by two Jordan blocks. And finally, it can have this mum point, and uh, that is a um, four by four Jordan block. And you see, so, so to say, this guy is, um, is the conifold. Uh, then you see uh, basically uh, these, um, uh, these um, um, middle cohomology becomes, so to say, a little bit mirror. Then for the two by two Jordan blocks, you see this K point. So two of these guys uh, uh, go out of this uh, row. And for the mum point, you basically have the full mirror and the four by four Jordan block. So it turns out that, uh, for instance, the uh, banana graph has all uh, these singularities. So at um, <clears throat> infrared, it has this K point. At um, ultraviolet, it has this, uh, sorry, it has this mum, um, mum point. At uh, ultraviolet, it has a K point. So again, this is very useful. Uh, to um, say how, um, uh, how a general Feynman graphs can be generated. So <clears throat> this is uh, basically with this list of, um, of um, proper general properties and what they could mean for the Feynman graphs. I want uh, basically to finish my talks and maybe there are questions. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Maybe you have most questions. So I think uh, the first question is by David. Right, thank you, David. Yes, uh, thank you, Albrecht, for this wonderful dictionary between concrete things I know about Feynman diagrams and deep mathematics, which I've heard from other people. It's so good to see it as you have it all on one slide. I want to uh, address my question to the quadratic relations, which you know I've been very interested in, in critical dimensions. Is there any role, any resonance of these quadratic relations in the epsilon expansion? That is a good question. I mean, um, neither this uh, self-duality nor this, um, uh, this uh, relations, we really find concrete examples. Uh, maybe Claude can correct me if there is uh, some, uh, some harbinger of that, but uh, for instance, uh, we check that the, um, that the self-duality actually goes away which in the one modular case is actually um, relating to this Griffith duality and the uh, quadratic relation. In, in the on shell, uh, in the um, critical dimension case, I'd like to make an advertisement for wonderful work by one of your co-authors, Kilian Burnish. I've been reading his master's thesis. Yeah, in which he looked at the modular cases in four dimension that uh, uh, with conductors uh, with uh, at levels 14 and 34 and did a wonderful, uh, a wonderful piece of work, I think inspired by help by, uh, um, uh, by Don Saguier. It, it really is the most extraordinary master's thesis I've seen. Well, it's the most extraordinary master's thesis I see, to be honest. <laughs> well, okay, Claude? Yeah, maybe to um, uh, continue this and to uh, uh, continue a bit David's question and to try to give an, an answer. So um, the quadratic relations, if you look at the epsilon expansion, so the first thing is Albert just said, 
if you look at this um, salvage on this condition, it gets lost if you look at the uh, uh, differential operators in dimensional organization. So we don't know if in dimensional organization with epsilon term norm, these things are even Calabriol because the necessary condition for the operator to be Calabriol could come from Calabriol, it's not so close, with epsilon term norm. So that means that all the machinery that we have there doesn't apply. So that's why we, we don't really know what happens at all the epsilon. Uh, for Having said that, you're probably aware of the work of Sebastian Miseria, Miseria and um, yeah, Paul Mastolia. They look at uh, cohomology with coefficients, and then they get kind of variants of Riemanns bilinear relations or twisted versions of Riemanns bilinear relations. How they are connected to the quadratic relations that we find or that you find, I don't know. Yeah, but it's a very interesting question. So th there seems to be a web of quadratic relations, which hopefully are all the same or just different facets of the same thing. But I guess that needs to be explored and worked out. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Okay, if not, thanks again. Thank you very much.